Hi, my name is Brian Beverly. I'm the lead consultant at Denim Group, and I'm going to be talking to Dan Cornell, our chief technology officer. And today we're talking about the execution phase of remediation projects. So uh, starting with the big stuff, Dan, what happens during the execution phase? Uh, well, the execution phase is where the rubber meets the road. You actually go through and make the fixes that you've uh, agreed upon to the application. Uh, you need to test to make sure from a security standpoint that they were, were fixed. Uh, and you also need to make sure that the application hasn't, uh, you haven't introduced any uh, quality assurance issues into the application. Finally, you push it into production. That's when you, you know, actually finally have addressed your risk uh, when the application is out in production. All right, that sounds pretty simple. Uh, I don't know if I'd say it's simple, but it should be straightforward. Uh, you know, the point of having a uh, structured mediation process is that there aren't a lot of unknowns at this point. During the inception, you brought everybody together uh, with a common understanding. During the planning, you've laid out exactly what you're going to do and how you do it. And so the execution phase should just be doing the things that you said you were going to do. Um, and there's still uh, you know, potential pitfalls, but uh, hopefully at this point, it's uh, fairly mechanical to, uh, you know, to get the fixes made, to get the you know, confirmation completed, and get things pushed out into production. So what can help uh, make this easier? Um, well, the two big pitfalls during the execution phase are getting your development environment set up and running, and as well as doing the, you know, from a quality assurance standpoint, reconfirming the, that the application is fit to go out into production. Um, you know, in order to make the environment set up, uh, you know, having an environment set up already or if you can use an existing development environment is great. Uh, we've also had a lot of success using environments that are deployed on virtual machines uh, because those can be copied and easily transferred. But uh, one, of the, one of the challenging or at least the time consuming things for certain applications uh, can be getting a successful development environment up and running. Uh, when you look at, uh, you know, kind of the requalification of the application, um, you know, that's where if a team has something like a, a lot of automated unit tests, if they've got, um, you know, built-in automated regression tests, uh, functional tests, those can be really useful because you can run those on the application and they will tell you, yes, what the application did that was correct for it to do before, it's still doing. So by having some of those facilities in place, you can really reduce the time required uh, for the execution phase of your remediation projects. Okay, so finally, uh, how do you know if you've been successful? Well, uh, you'll know that you're successful if you've met the goals that you've laid out along the way. Um, you know, these were laid out at a very high level during the inception part of the project, uh, and hopefully laid out in a much more specific fashion, you know, with a, a specific budget, specific tasks, uh, and specific uh, resources and timeline during your planning. Uh, when you come to the end of the execution phase, you should be able to look back and say, well, you know, we met our goal or, uh, or we didn't meet our goal. Now, also, this is a good time to look back on some remediation metrics. How long did it take you to fix vulnerabilities? What percentage of the vulnerabilities did you fix for different categories? Um, and uh, you know, to, so that you can look back and understand, so that you can better quantify the impact that these vulnerabilities have, you know, what sort of effort was required to go in and correct them, and those can hopefully help you justify pulling security earlier in the software development lifecycle. All right, thank you very much. So finally, uh, how can we contact you? How can we get in touch with you on the internet? Um, you can email me, dan at denimgroup.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Daniel Cornell.